people ask about the chorus when we do ancient Athenian tragedy. And it is an interesting and difficult question for a director. How do you assemble a group of men or women who were originally 12 and danced and sang in masks in a theater that had 24,000 people watching and they performed it only once? How do you, how do you tackle that? Well, each production has to solve it in a different way. And originally, Greek drama was obviously, initially, mainly a chorus. Just people singing and dancing a story. The interesting thing about that is that Aristotle and others suggest that the drama we now have originated when someone created an answerer, someone who spoke back to that chorus. And the Greek word for to answer is hypokrine, which in fact as a noun is hypocrites, which in English is a hypocrite, hence the origin of that word in English, namely an answerer, an actor, someone who pretends to be someone else. Now when we do the plays, one should not discard the importance of this chorus. Our problem as a modern audience is that the chorus rarely advance the action. In fact, they comment on it. But it was where the poets used their most exotic, lyrical, deeply felt songs. So my job as a translator, especially with the Agamemnon, because Aeschylus was the greatest of these, is to try and find a vocabulary, a tone that is elevated, but tells a story. Tells a story. How Troy fell. How Troy died. How Helen was the cause of war. And so in some sense, the audience's job is to recognize that these original plays, 2,500 years old, contained elements that modern plays do not, including the chorus, and to sit back and just listen and enjoy the words.